Alright, what is up guys? Today I'm very excited about this video. I'm bringing you 10 Photoshop tricks that will increase your productivity. I've been learning a lot lately and I thought that I would teach y'all what I'm learning because all these tips and tricks that I am learning, they're helping me out a lot. It helps me get work done a lot quicker, smoother, faster, whatever you want to say. But anyway, let's get into it. First of all, it is important to note, as you can see, important to note. Um, when using these shortcuts, if you, I'm on a Mac, so everything that I say will be command and option, really. Um, and then for PC, when y'all hear me say command and option, y'all use control and alt. You use control to use a shortcut, and like on Mac, you use command to use a shortcut. Other than that, just remember that that note. Take a picture right now, so you'll remember when I say uh, when I say command and option. You say that's right, Control and Alt. All right, if you're on PC. But let's get started. So first off, we're gonna be talking about color themes, um, like color palettes and stuff. A really good website you can use, you know, when you need to find color palettes you want to work with is Colors.com. Um, I can leave in the description, but you just click space when you get on here. You can even search up wherever the search bar may be. Oh, explore. You can explore and search other color palettes. When you find something you like, you can lock it, lock it, and you can just keep going. So that's a really good website. But if you never want to leave Photoshop, you don't want to get out of it, and you're like, nah, I'm good. Um, then you're just going to go up here to Window. Never knew about this because it's kind of hidden. Uh, extensions and then Adobe Color Themes. This is going to bring up a bunch of color palettes made by people. Um, and let's just say I like Cherry Bomb, right? Taking it back to uh, Foursquare in the good old days. So you're going to click on this, these three little dots and you can add it to your swatches. It'll pop up right here. And then that'll be very convenient for you later in this video. You'll see why. Um, but you can add these to your. You can add. Get off that. You can add these to your color swatches. I have all my Photoshop given ones in here and then all the ones that I find that I like, I put them in here. So you can do that. Um, next up on the second tip, we are going to be talking about the marquee tool. So to pull up the marquee tool, all you're going to do is click M and it'll bring it up. When you're creating a shape, if you want it to be even, like you can do this, you can just click and drag, but it's not going to be even. Um, if you want it to be even size, length and width, you're going to want to hold down, oh, hello, Dad. Hold down square, or not square, hold down shift, and then drag. All right? Okay, so you got that now. And when you want to quick fill it, if you are on a Mac, all you're going to do is options, delete, and that's going to bring in your foreground color. I'm going to do command Z to go backwards, uh, if you didn't know that. And then if you want to fill in this background color, all you're going to do is command delete, which you're not going to be able to see, but there it is. Um, so yeah, we'll just make it a different color so y'all can see it. So command delete, right? And then when you want to get rid of the marquee tool, you just do command D and that's going to get rid of it. Uh, get rid of the marquee tool. You're free to move it around, do whatever to. Uh, command T to scale and hold down shift uh, if you want to keep it. Keep it even. Alright, so that's the second thing. Also, it's important to note a tip that goes along with this tip. If you want to switch in between your foreground and background color, all you have to do is press X. Alright, so let's go back to here and let's say I don't want to fill it with that. I want to click X and then do my options delete. There you go. So clicking X is just a quick way. Let's say you have your brush tool, which you can just click B for your brush tool. But uh, you just want to switch in between really quickly. You just click X. It's really useful, time saving. It's quick. Next thing I want to talk about uh, that everybody should know and should be using when you're working with Photoshop is the ruler. So these are the rulers up here. What you're going to do to bring them up is Command R. It'll hide them and bring them back up. All right? Or you can go to View. You can go down here and click Rulers, and that'll bring it up as well. But it's pretty important whenever you're working with something, you're going to want to click here, drag out, 
and when you get to the middle it'll just snap you'll feel it you'll see what I'm talking about when you're working with it click drag and now you know where the middles are so then you know you can align stuff right so that's pretty important um, also another thing is let's just say uh, let's bring this back up if you ever want to bring back up one of these shapes hold down command and then click on the layer thumbnail and that'll do that so let's bring this over here now if you see if you see on mine right we have these little pink lines that pop up those are called smart guides if you want to activate smart guides it's very it's very useful first of all so let me show you for example let's uh let's scale these down which you can just select both layers you're going to click on one hold command and that'll select whatever layers you want so there's another tip right there in itself um, see if I just want to select certain ones if you want to select all of them hold down shift and then it'll take everything in between where you started and where you click next all right so you hold down shift and then you click wherever you want to uh, the range of what you want to get but anyway back to this we're here right let's put him here man J to make one more layer to duplicate it I mean all right and you see how it knows it shows me that all these are 177 pixels apart that's why Smart Guides is super useful. Um, you're going to go to View. You're going to go to Show. And you're going to go down here to Smart Guides. So if you're not using that already, make sure you use that. Uh, it, it is a lifesaver. It is a game changer. I'm going to delete these now. All right, the next thing is how to change only one color at a time. Now, if you've seen one of my previous videos, I said that you could have gone in here, right? You could have clicked on something. You could have gone solid color. Uh, probably not do red since it's already red, but you could have done solid color. You could have came in here and be like, oh, I want a yellow. You could have came, changed it to color, but sometimes it doesn't look too great. You have to do a color, and then you got to do like an overlay to make it look right. Anyway, there's an easier way. I found it. So... You're going to want to be over the layer, Command-U. Uh, remember, if you're on a PC, it's going to be different for you. Um, it's going to be Control-U. So, Command or Control-U, right? And it's going to bring up this. And you're like, ah, still changing everything. What if I just want to change one color, right? So let's put it back to zero. And let's say I want to change to red. So you click on this master thing here. Click reds. And boom. Ta-da. You're only changing the reds. If I wanted to just change the yellows, click there. Boom. Easy as that. Um, that's something I didn't know about as well. Uh, and now that I do know it, it saves me a lot of time. So definitely useful. Another one I like to use. And uh, let's move on to the next tip. Okay, so the next tip is going to be how to change all text colors at once. So, let's bring up our text, right? I want to change the color of all these at the same time. So we're going to go in here. Or you don't even have to go in here, honestly. You can be up here if I want. You're going to want to go to here, right here. This is the text filter. And it's going to bring up all your text. All right? Now, going back to those color swatches I showed y'all earlier. Let's click on productivity. Hold down shift and then click on the last one so we can grab all the text. All you're gonna do now is click on one of your color swatches. You could also group all these and then make a color overlay. I don't find that as effective, it just takes more time. So you just go over here, click on the color swatch, and it's gonna change the color of all the text. Really useful. Um, another thing, if you just wanted to change a certain type of text, so let's just, all right, uh, and let's change this guy one too. So you only wanted to say you only wanted to change the color of certain uh, certain words, right? So you come you'll come here, change it to name, and then do type of text, right? And then you can just change those, and not the other ones. Going off of that tip. We're going on to the next part. Let's change this back to kind. Don't forget to do that. And uh, get off of text. 
All right, so we're gonna close that. We're gonna open my shapes. So this will be how to change all the shape colors at once. So all you do, you're gonna come up here right next to where we were in the text one. You're gonna click on this shape filter. Ta-da, it brings up all your shapes. Hold down command shift, or just shift, sorry, shift and then click. Or if you just wanna change these two, hold down this one, or click on this one, then hold down command or control on a PC, and then click on whatever other one you wanna change. And ta-da. That's a quick and easy way to find all your shapes so you don't have to go searching for it throughout your whole, uh, throughout all your layers. If you have like a big layer project, you don't want to have to search for it. Which, if you did want to just find something quick, there is an easier way to do that. All you do, hold down Command or Control and click. All right, click on what you're trying to find in your layers. And it's going to bring it up for you. All right. Um, another thing how to duplicate. So you can do Command J like I talked about earlier or you can come over this hold down options which can be Alt on a PC click and drag. Options click and drag. And also I didn't tell you earlier with the smart guides if you want to bring them back up if you hit them earlier do Command or Control on a PC and then H. And that'll bring that back up if you, you, know, like, you don't know where it went. So yeah you should hold down Alt and drag. Also, you can come over here, Alt, and then if you want to, you want to make multiple layers, right? You do Alt, down, sideways, left, right, up, whatever. So that's just another quick and easy way to do that. So that's that for duplicating. Now I'm going to show you how to change corners on a rectangle. Uh, this I didn't know about, um, but it's very effective. So create a new layer. My bad. Come down here to the rectangle tool, which uh, you can just click U to get to the rectangle tool. Let's draw a rectangle. All right. Make sure this is on shape. I was working with paths earlier. Uh, shapes will not. I mean, paths will not show up in your uh, layers. So we have that now. Now let's just say I want to get rid of these hard edges. So you can come over here into properties and you'll see these four corners. If you have this unlinked, you can click and drag and it'll change uh, it'll change that corner, just the one you chose. But if you want to change all of them at the same time, click on back on this link thing. It doesn't matter which one you click. When you click and drag, it's going to change all of them accordingly. So Quick and easy way to do that. Um, so you can make these type shapes. Right? So, also very effective. The last thing I'm going to show you all today is this navigator tool. It's more important for working with thumbnails, I believe. Um, at least for me, I find it important because, let's just look. When you bring that up, that's how it's going to look because thumbnails are small on YouTube, so that's kind of how your viewers are going to see it or your clients, viewers, whoever it may be. Uh, so what you're going to do is come up here to a window, scroll down, and navigator. Now, I just took mine off, uh, but to show you all again, window, scroll down, navigator, and it'll put it right in there. You can zoom in on certain parts that you want to look at. And also, if you want to drag around, you have to come up here. I don't know why I tried to drag anything early. But you can drag around and look at certain parts. So that is very effective for thumbnail creation. Um, and that is the 10 tips for today. Uh, if you did like this type of video and you do want to see more things, that will you know, little Photoshop tricks uh, and shortcuts, let me know. And if it's highly requested, of course, I'll bring out another one. Um, I'm always interested to hear what y'all want next, so please let me know in those comments. Leave a like, turn on the notifications so you know every time that I upload, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.